Most individuals have access to air conditioning, but not all. I, I've seen reports where there are pockets of uh, folks who have are living in challenging economic situations where air conditioning is not typical or is only in a small part of the house. So those are the vulnerable populations for, for these kind of heat events, prolonged heat events, especially such as what we're having and we will be having for at least the next week. Uh, the story that will be leading all of the bulletins across the states, the extraordinary heat wave that has hit parts of America, causing dangerous and, in some cases, completely unlivable conditions. On Sunday, temperatures in Death Valley in California hit 53.9 degrees, uh, only a few degrees shy of the hottest temperature which has ever been recorded on Earth. Elsewhere, a heat dome has formed over, the, over Phoenix, leading millions to experience weather warnings. We can talk to Frank Brody, who's an American meteorologist who spent 40 years with the US National Weather Service and now works with the Meteorological Research Organization, Weather Extreme. I would imagine you're quite busy at the moment, Frank. Good to talk to you. Yes, good to talk to you. And uh, yes, American meteorologists are very busy tracking this extreme heat wave that is affecting and will continue to affect the southwestern part of our country and uh, all the way into Texas and parts of the Gulf Coast. Uh, talk us through uh, which parts are the worst affected and just how different the temperature is now to what it usually is at this time of year. The main areas affected are anywhere from central California, most of Nevada, into the southwestern U.S., the states of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona into Texas. The Gulf Coast area has had extreme heat, but that has abated for a while other than South Florida. But the heat will return to the Gulf of Mexico border states, such as Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama during this coming week. The most extreme heat has been in the Southwest. And I'll just give you a few numbers as examples for Phoenix, Arizona. Every day this coming week, the temperature is expected to be up around 46 C. So in Fahrenheit, that's between 115 and 118 degrees every single day. And the normal high is 106, which is still hot, but way above normal. And equally significant is the nighttime low temperatures are only dropping into the mid 90s, 94, 95 degrees. And so it makes it very hard for people without air conditioning to have their bodies cool down yeah. uh, when it only when it stays that hot overnight. So I wanted to ask about air conditioning. I'm glad you mentioned it there, Frank. I was reading a piece in our newspaper at the weekend explaining how, you know, this has just become uh, such a rush to get to air con and actually you cannot expect the human body to survive without it at the moment in so many of these states well survival can happen it just makes life much harder and one of the reasons the entire southwestern part of the country became more populated was the advent of air conditioning several decades ago and so air conditioning is common, but it's not universal. And that makes it very challenging for, for some folks that don't have air conditioning to find relief. But most people do have air conditioning in these states that are affected. And also they've got access to public air conditioning. Presumably there's a temperature at which any municipality has to provide cooling places for their vulnerable citizens to go. That is correct. Most individuals have access to air conditioning, but not all. I, I've seen reports where there are pockets of uh, folks who have are living in challenging economic situations where air conditioning is not typical or is only in a small part of the house. So those are the vulnerable populations for, for these kind of heat events, prolonged heat events, especially such as what we're having and we will be having for at least the next week. And Frank, I know you're not you're not a medical person, but what about the impact on the very, very young babies? 
and indeed on care of the very elderly. This must be incredibly challenging. It is. The, the folks who are senior in age have to be especially careful because uh, as you age, as you know, your body becomes more vulnerable in many ways. So, so that is one at-risk population. And you're right, I'm not a medical person, but we, we have to take care with our babies, make sure that we keep them indoors with us in air-conditioned areas as much as practical. Mm. Uh, Frank, you live in a country which has got a vocal contingent of climate change deniers, and I wonder whether or not their voices are being challenged a bit more this summer because of these extraordinary weather conditions. Well, I will say that with respect to climate change, it's very difficult, it will be difficult in the short term to make a direct attribution of this prolonged heat wave to climate change. However, climate change, global warming in particular, sets the table and makes the odds of such heat waves more likely. Whether or not this particular heat wave can be attributed to climate change is, has yet to be determined and will take more research and study. I'll also comment that the north central part of the country around the Great Lakes area and much of the northeastern part of the country has, has had average or cooler than average temperatures. And so there is a balance in the atmosphere between extreme heat in the south and southwest and cooler than normal weather across much of the northern tier from the Great Plains eastward. Mm. So do you not feel that there will then be any greater kind of political motivation with regard to reaching net zero, to joining in international climate change agreements because of what we are experiencing this summer? I think this will move the needle a bit. Um, I can't speak for individuals who are, uh, as you de described it, climate change deniers. Um, I think it will all go into the, the scientific database for, for folks to study and evaluate and hopefully come up with the right answers. Mm. Uh, final question, Frank. What is the highest temperature that you have ever been in in America? The highest temperature I've experienced is 111 degrees. That was twice. I lived in Houston, Texas for many years. And even though that's right along the Gulf Coast and, and the, the proximity to water keeps us from extreme heat, sometimes that changes. And so we hit 111. And I live in Washington State near Seattle. And two years ago at about this time, we had an extreme heat wave where I also experienced temperatures that hit 111 degrees. Okay. And in Celsius, that is, forgive my ability, I've just been trying to take away 30 Four, and divide 44. by 2. <laughs> 44. Is that right? Is it 44 in Celsius? That sounds about right. I yeah. don't have the, the conversion in front of me. Uh, now, you see, this is where we speak the same language, but we don't really, Frank. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's really interesting to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time this afternoon. Frank Brody uh, works with the Meteorological Research Organization, Weather Extreme. Yeah, I was just.